But the Lions started many camps today. Mandatory. Many camps Ten today. teams uh, started today. They're one hundred percent, and that means they're trying to get ahead of the curve. Ten teams start today. Lot out of Allen Park. We got even some good sound, man. Uh, yes, sir. Why don't you, uh, why don't you, why don't you demonstrate that for we us? We could, man. Hey, but Dan Campbell spoke today at camp, and uh, he was up there, and they asked him about the team and who's going to be the starters, who's going to be out in that secondary, blah, blah, blah. This guy could not be any happier. He basically said, listen, man, I, I don't even know who we're going to start. Check it out. It's a great place to be in. We have so many options right now, so much competitiveness. AG and we're talking about it again. Uh, AG and I were the other day. Brad and I are talking about it every evening. I mean, it's like, I mean, um, you know, the talent level, the competitiveness, the versatility. Like, honestly, we have no idea who our starting lineup's going to be right now. And it's exciting. It's so good. Like, there's no telling who's going to be our outside corners, who's going to be our nickel, who's going to be our safeties. I mean, we, this, this thing is wide open across the board. Um, and it's going to be great to let these guys compete and just go after it and see who, who goes and is going to be the most reliable guys for us, most dependable. So it's exciting. You can't, you can't get a better sound from a coach than you just heard from Dan Campbell when he tells you there's so much talent on this team. I have no idea who's going to start, who's coming off the bench. We have so much talent here. I cannot give you a lineup. Today, he says he talks to Brad Holmes every night. They're talking about this stuff. Yeah. He talked to AG about this defense that had gotten so much better in just over a draft and, and, and some free agent signings. It's a great spot to be at. The Lions are, they're in a spot they've never been in before going forward. Yeah, 100%. You know, and I, as, the, uh, as, <laughs> as the sound said, that's how it is. It's a situation where it, you know you have a couple stars. You know Amar Ross St. Brown's a starter. You know Jared Goff. You, there are a couple positions where there are stars, but there are a lot of positions where guys are fighting it off for the first time, whether it's Carlton Davis coming over here, whether it's Terry Arnardo, whether it's a guy like Ennis Rakestraw that's trying to come in there. Donovan People jones is trying to become the number two, number three wide receiver, Khalif Raymond. So there's a lot of battling between these players. And this is the time you really show the coaches that you're dialed in. This is the time you really establish yourself in the team. Like being in the NFL this time of year when things like that are going on, the guys that's coming to play, the guys that are in the film room, the guys that are taking it serious, the guys that are learning other positions outside of their own. Those are the guys you start following, and those are the guys that make the seconds and the thirds, and then you get this thing rolling in the, uh, in the fall. Well, and, and there's, a, there's a change in the energy that you're seeing from Brad and Dan when they're giving these pressers because mm -hmm. when they first got here, they were confident. And whether it was real or whether it was for show to, to, you know, permeate through the team. These guys were just confident and realizing that they basically had some kind of, you know, second and third level players fighting it out to be on the first team coming in this season. They truly have one of the top five rosters in the league and they have organizational depth now that we've never seen yeah. in the Detroit lions locker room. So, I see an excitement, and it's a tempered excitement, but there's just so many things for them to talk about. They're not caught up on Rodrigo and having to push him because realistically, it's a, a borderline second or third tier court, uh, linebacker, linebacker that was yeah. starting for them at the time. At this yeah. point, they realize not only is their starting 11 on both sides of the ball and special teams really strong, but their organizational depth is pushing every level of practice through all layers of, of, of talent. And, and it's, it, it's something that isn't going to be make this team just good this year. It's going to make them great through the rest of this decade. Yeah, and I like the way you presented that, Maz. You know, we've watched this team from 2021 when they didn't have people and the excuses were they don't have player personnel. They just don't have the talent to implement what Aaron Glenn and what the, <laughs> the offensive coordinator at the time can do. Second year, they get better. And then once they really got good, you know what we said last year? You're going to see it. it's going to be harder to make this Lions roster. They're going to lose some good players, some really good players, because guys just step up. Guys are making it happen. And I like what you said. You're 100% honest. The teams that build it this way, where you build it up the right way, you show that hard work gets you on this field. This is how our organization is run. You built sustainable success, much like the Baltimore Ravens. When John Harbaugh got there, they built it a certain way. I mean, he followed in the image that was already there. But when you build it a certain way, look at the 49ers and Kyle Shanahan right now. You're their years. You keep it in, intact. So I like where the Lions are, but I like where the Lions are going to be in the foreseeable future. And, and what are they going to be? 
15 non-drafted players on this roster? That's mm-hmm. insane. That's amazing. That's yeah. insane. They're, uh, they don't have any issues, this team. Mm. Players show up. They want to be there. The coaches are all there. You get Terrell Williams, who comes over from Tennessee, wound up coaching the uh, Senior Bowl for the South last, last year. Good friend of Dan Campbell. Comes over. He's going to coach the defensive line and the running backs coordinator. They, they just – they improve everywhere. You have players like Aiden Hutchinson with – He's going to have a new move this year. I guarantee it. He is more healthy than he's ever been. He is stronger than he's ever been. You got guys coming in. I heard Colby Sorsdahl is working like a beast, and he will be ready to be be plugged in in case there's an injury or they need to switch something up. That's a kid they grafted from William & Mary. Got some play last year. Got beat up a little. They took him out, but he has hung in there. He's gotten better. Broderick Martin. Supposedly, he's got like a new body. He is ready to go. James Houston, ready to go. He's healthy. Everything is on the ups for this team. Listen to Ian Rappaport from NFL Network. This is what he said today about the Lions. He said the early pecking order in the remade secondary. Brad Holmes did yeoman's work revamping the secondary, taking Carlton Davis, signing Amik Robertson, bringing back Emmanuel Mosley, and drafting Terry and Arnold and Ennis Rakestraw in the first, second rounds. This overhaul has a Lions defense that was picked on last season for a swift turnaround this year. The question into mandatory minicamp is now how each rookie will be used in the process, and then will Brian Branch's versatility, will he play the nickel role, or will he be more of a roving safety with one of the rookies filling that slot? So the Lions are one of 10 teams that have the uh, mandatory minicamp starting today. There's already trouble in San Francisco Brandon Ayuk sitting out today. We talked yesterday about Lamar Jackson. He skipped all the OTAs. He lost himself 750 grand. This team, there's no issues. They come to work, they punch the clock, and they play. And they are ready for the next step, which is the Super Bowl. Yeah, definitely, definitely there are some issues with other teams, but that's kind of what happens when you get to that point where more and more people are getting paid, more and people deserve money, more and more you've been right there, the Baltimore Ravens, you've been right there, the 49ers, and it hasn't panned out yet. Now they're going to get rid of IU. Now you got to deal with that. So that may come down the line, but the Lions are in a space now where that hasn't entered, Matt, you're absolutely right. And the players you have, this is why you got to keep tipping your cap to Brad Holmes. When you're talking about these players developing, Broderick Wright, I mean, uh, Broderick Wright, new body. You're talking about Kobe Sorzel. He's working like a man possessed so that he can be ready for this season. They drafted right. And this is another nod to, uh, to Brown Holmes. Those guys didn't hit last year, but they weren't drafting them for last year. They were drafting them for the foreseeable future, much like they did with this draft, the kind of conundrum picks there at the end. So it's. Another nod, Brown Holmes knows the post. He gets the guys that he needs to play right away, the Aiden Hutchinsons of the world and the Panay Sewells. But he also knows how to draft those guys in rounds four, rounds five, that you know what? Those guys would be ready against you. Justin yep. Houston. Hey, what about Josh Pascal? We're still trying to yep. figure out what's happening with that. Jack Campbell played a lot last year, but they knew they really would probably get the best out of him year two, year three. So once again, the mad scientist strikes again. Absolutely. Absolutely. 